this video we're going to show you several tricks and techniques that everyone needs to know to use the program effectively. Now let's get started by going up to the tools menu and we'll go to drawing defaults. Now drawing defaults what we can do here is we can set up uh, values that the program uses to start up. Uh, so if you always want to use a certain type of paver uh, material uh, you could do that uh, you could also set the default hatch pattern for uh, a paver along with the scale and you could you know change the uh, values of the soldier course over here if you wanted to do that and same way with edging ground cover uh, retaining walls uh, the irrigation pipe okay on the drawing tab you'll see here you can set up the paper size so if you always wanted to set up at a eight and a half by eleven letter size uh, and a, a drawing scale of say a one eighth inch scale, you could set those values here. If you want to change the the default font style, you can change that here so that every time that you start a planner drawing, it's using whatever is set up here in drawing defaults. You don't have to keep changing things with each drawing. Okay, so that's drawing defaults. Another thing that I would recommend is that you go up and you go to the tools menu and you go to drawing options. Now on the drawing options you have several tabs here. On the file tab there's a feature here called auto save uh, where it will auto save a backup file every few minutes as you're doing a design. So the program it will initially after about 10 minutes ask you to save the drawing but it's not going to keep asking you every 10 minutes so uh, this auto save feature what it's going to do is automatically save your drawing uh, and it will remember this from drawing to drawing so you don't have to keep resetting this so what we would do is uh, suggest that you do every 20 to 30 minutes uh, you don't want to do it too frequently because you it could interrupt you while you're drawing uh, when it's trying to save so about every 20 to 30 minutes should be fine. Next what we can do is we can, we're going to show you how to uh, bulge these uh, a line like this one into a, a, into a nice smooth arc. Now we've, we've talked about this throughout the videos uh, where you can bulge, bulge things like this but if you double click on a either a polyline or a polygon shape uh, that will get into the edit vertice mode where you see the green points along the uh, corners here. Now you can also get into the edit vertice mode by right clicking on it and going to edit vertices. Okay. Now if we were to click on this line that moves in between the two uh, green points here it will just add another point and there will be straight lines in between that point. But what we can also do is if we want to add an arc like this we simply hold the control key down on the keyboard and then click on the line and then pull it out a little bit and then drop it and then it adds a nice smooth arc in between those two vertice points. Another thing that we can do here is uh, we can rotate objects around. It's very easy to rotate objects. Anytime that you select an object you're going to have a yellow triangle in the middle I'm sorry a yellow diamond in the middle and a blue triangle which is our rotation triangle. That rotation triangle when I mouse over it you'll see my cursor changes to a little rotation cursor and I can simply rotate that around like so okay but you'll notice that it, it does jump from point to point it doesn't do a, a fine rotation but we can do a fine rotation by simply pressing and holding the shift key down on the keyboard and that'll give us a nice smooth rotation so we can rotate it to just about any angle that we want just by doing that also if we pull our cursor out farther away from the object we have a little better range of motion to rotate those objects around. We can also rotate the hatch patterns within an object so uh, I have a, a herringbone brick pattern applied to this one so what we can do is we can simply right click on that hatch pattern and we can go down to rotate pattern and we get a little rotation triangle on this one so I just click on it and then I just rotate it around and then it turns it like so. Alright, one of my favorite tools is the uh, Property Painter tool. This is a big time saver. Now here we have a, a paver area and I have a herringbone pattern on it. Uh, it's a black, it's currently in black right now. Let's go ahead and I'm going to select a different color. Let's go with a dark brown. Okay, let's go a little bit brighter. 
Okay, so uh, we've got that in a brown color and uh, we've got that herringbone pattern. What we're going to do is the property painter is going to copy the properties of this area onto something else. So I have a similar uh, paver over here. So I have a couple paver areas here that have different hash patterns applied to them and they're black not brown. So the property painter tool is found up here on the toolbar right next to the undo button. I'll click on that. Okay, when I mouse over my drawing you'll see the cursor changes to a little paintbrush with arrows pointing to it with a little circle there. First I want to click on the perimeter of that paver area and you'll see now my my cursor has changed where the the uh, paintbrush is pushing uh, properties to the circle there so it has two arrows pointing to the circle I simply go over to the secondary paver and I click on that and then I go to the third one and click on that so what it did is it inherited the visual properties of this over to here now if I was to change the the material type it's not going to copy the material type over uh, from one uh, to the other Okay, so it is, uh, you'll see here, it says paver 21 on this one. That's tutorial paver on that one and on this one. So it didn't copy that, but it did all copy all of the visual attributes of uh, the first paver onto the second and third one. You can do the same with, with lines, such as these uh, polylines here. I'll just select my property painter, click on the first one, and then go to the second, and the third, and the fourth, and that inherits the properties throughout each of those lines. All right, another tool that we have uh, that can be helpful is one called an ortho lock. An ortho lock just basically locks the cursor or a line to the grid. So if I go in and I, I'll just select my closed paver tool and I'll click on a point and you'll see here it allows me to go at any angle. But let's say I want that to be straight with the grid, I simply press the O key on the keyboard and that aligns it straight with the grid. So I'll click and then I'll pull down and everything here will only go either horizontal or vertical. It does not allow me to draw a diagonal line. Okay, So that's the ortho lock. Okay, We also have X lock and Y lock where it locks to the X axis and walk locks to the y-axis. The keyboard shortcuts for those are x and y. Okay. Another important one is one called the normal lock. Now a normal lock is easily demonstrated with the foundation wall tool. I'll select the foundation wall tool and I'm going to unlock up here on the edit bar so that I can do a diagonal line. Now what I'll do is I'll typically draw the longest wall that I have on a structure at the distance that I need here at the angle uh, that I want so I'll go ahead and click there okay so that's my first wall okay now if I press and hold the L key on the keyboard okay every line that I draw thereafter and I'm, I'm still holding the L key which is the normal lock every line will be based on 90 degrees as far as that first angle so this is a 90 degree angle this is a 90 degree there's 90 90 90 so now everything is, is perfectly aligned. Okay, so I don't have a lot of jagged uh, uh, lines just because I was I didn't have to guess uh, where all of my points were. So that's called the normal lock. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to show you something called the offset tool. Now, an offset tool, I like to use it when I'm drawing, say, a parking lot, uh, and I'm, I'm drawing in the stripes in a parking lot. Typically, a parking lot stripe is uh, is about 20 feet long, uh, and there are uh, usually nine feet apart. Sometimes a little more uh, than nine feet, but uh, uh, most of the time they're going to be a nine feet increments. Okay, so this is going to represent one parking lot stripe. Okay, so I'm going to use my offset tool, which is found under the draw menu and I'll go down to duplicate and offset okay now up in the edit bar I have an offset distance that I'm going to set here at nine feet okay now when I mouse over this line and I go to one side or the other of that line and it'll place a parallel line exactly offset nine feet away so I can go through and I can very quickly stripe that parking lot using the offset tool 
Okay. Now similar to the offset tool is the parallel tool. Now the parallel tool is found under that duplicate menu. So if I go to draw, duplicate, and parallel, the parallel tool you don't have to set a value up in the edit bar because it's going to be a variable distance. So I'll go down to this curve here. I'll click on it to select it and then I'll pull it in to set the parallel distance. So I'll, I want to drop it right about there so I'll click again and then it drops that line. So if I want to keep repeating that I can do that pretty easily. So it matches that curve very nicely and it should be uh, a nice even spacing all the way throughout that shape. Okay, the final thing that we're going to do here is uh, sometimes what will happen is you will accidentally close a toolbar and you won't know how to get it back. So this is how we get it back. Now, an example is I've, I've got my content librarian here and I accidentally drag it off into the edge here. Well, uh, a lot of people what they'll do is they'll accidentally go ahead and close that. Well, now they've lost their symbol library. So let's show you how to get any toolbar back. To get a toolbar back, we simply go to the View menu and go to Toolbars. Okay, and we look for the ones that are unchecked here. Now, the one that I closed accidentally was the Content Librarian. It's a very important one to have that one up there for sure. So we want to check that and click OK. And that brings it back to wherever I closed it, whatever the position was when I had closed that. So if we want to uh, drag this over to the side of the program, you'll notice that when we get to the edge of it, it starts to elongate, and I drop it there, and it docks it to the edge of the toolbar. Okay, so anytime that you lose a toolbar, always go up to View and Toolbars, and that'll show you the ones that you've temporarily closed. Okay, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, check out our blog at ProLandscape.com for more tips.